this car doing everything that it's done, we want to do a nice little welcome to the next phase of the channel. That includes doing an all-wheel drive burnout. Show you that the drivetrain, the engine, everything's so solid that we can just do that out here. So this was kind of last second, but this is the oil after all of the dynos and Ken. All of that is right here. That shows you just how bad that oil pump failed. This is just a testament to how good the Valvoline oil is because even with this going through my oil system, I made all that power and continued on. The car's perfectly fine, the engine's perfectly fine. Oil pump itself, well, this is part of the oil pump sitting right in there, but that's the job of the oil. It even <laughs> outdid the pump itself. I cannot thank Valvoline enough for making this oil because anything less, um, that pump would have certainly caused a failure on my entire car. Instantly broke. <laughs> okay, so we got more torque than I thought. We'll come back to this. We lost light. We'll, we'll come back to this. For all you guys watching, we're showing you everything. There's no secrets now. You do not want a single fingerprint drop of oil, breath, anything, sperm. You don't want anything <laughs> on that taper. It's actually a really cool moment for all of us because this is the first time the mo motor's been out since. Uh, it first went in to make power, so everything else, it's all been on the same run. And, you know, we're going to take it down for health checks, but it's just like a, it's like, a, oh my God, you forget everything that you've built on top of what's supposed to be an unreliable motor, and we've just trusted it to work so well. So it's like, you forget all the ignition, all the MSD and the uh, fuel tech, you forget all those are hidden under the intake, you forget all the injectors are all firing, all 16 of those, you, you just kind of forget all those details as you build onto it. It's a really weird moment. This is finally time to tear the little guy out. Just see. Nobody's ran an engine like this before. Nobody knows how the bearings inside are doing, nothing. So it's time to take a look. While it's still good, take it out and see what's inside the monster. Everything should be off. I'm gonna do a quick check on that and pull it from the trans. We've never pulled the engine this way. I'm interested to see if this slides forward. It's close, but something, something wedged. This lift makes this process so much easier because I had to like, to get this thing under there before, I had to get the car up on two jacks, but then jack up the transmission and then jack everything else up. It was a mess. So the engine is looking good to move forward. Just muscle it towards me and that's gonna cause that. Oh, then put shaft came with the engine that the, the little trans penis is off. Can you reach in there and pull the dildo out of the back? There we are. Man, this will be perfect. Watch this. Go ahead. So look at this. Right there to right here. Uh, one more. So I'm, I'm pulling it forward as it's going up. Um, stop there for a second because we can't go any farther forward. Now we're actually going to pull it like this. Okay. Yeah, crank it away. There we are, guys. Yeah, that's the first time you've seen it like this. Should we give you some privacy or? Yeah, yeah. I just need some time. You a little piss monster? 
Pina my Diablo. He's been marking the territory. He thinks this shop is his. You don't even pay rent. You don't help out with any of the bills. You don't even help me build the cars. But he has the loudest mouth. He just complains all the time. And then he rubs his balls on my car. Look, look he's jingling. He's jingling them. <laughs> yeah. You want food? Come here. It's in. We're getting you. We're getting you neutered. We're basically gonna trap him to neuter him. Not so much just because of this, but he's. We're gonna take him to the vet and uh, see if we can make him healthy. Come here, kid. It's right here. Come right there. He knows not to go in. Yeah, he knows. One step closer. Have you ever heard the phrase, quit while you're ahead? No, me either. But for once in my life, I'm actually doing that. This is a fully running 1400 plus horsepower engine, and I want to take it apart before I blow it up. A couple reasons why. One is in 2021, you're about to see some announcements that are going to blow your mind. Already crazier than how this has started, it's only heating up. So I I'm going to build a second one of these. Not only that, we're also going to be finishing the C8 Corvette's engine. And what do I want? I want to have all the engines have the exact same bolt holes in all the same spots. So we have to take this one down to look at where the holes are correct compared to the stock engine. That way all my parts are interchangeable and we don't have Mickey Mouse shit. It's all simple. On top of that, nobody's ever ran an engine this hard on the street before and we need to do a quality health check before we do something stupid. It's on my tune. I was the final assembler of this engine. I am, that's my first on both of those. I set the ego aside. Let's do a health check, refresh everything, and then put it right back in. What we're gonna do first is take the oil pan off, which is actually really fun with the amount of sealant I put on there. Take all the bolts off of that. Take off the oil system here. Take off the flywheel. Get it really down to the short block. And then that goes on the operating. Uh, we're gonna set this thing onto that metal counter and we're, we're literally going to chop chop, chop, and then we're gonna place it on the other counter. Two of the major things needed for this engine are the rear nut, and in our case, the front one. Slightly different sizes. I gotta find the right one perfectly, but this is the holy grail of nuts. The biggest sockets you're gonna find. All I can think about is nuts. <laughs> One of the most important things about this is that front cover has a bearing inside of it. It's ball bearing, but I definitely think that helped whenever we had oil pump problems. So there's the front counterweight, much smaller than most of them. Feels very familiar. How is our first bearing looking? Perfect. Yeah, that beautiful blue. A little bit of right there. But it's not to the copper or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There's our front bearing. So these are the tension bolts that go through the motor, but they're studs and mixture of bolt and studs. So this is kind of the coolest part of the whole build, to be honest. By the way, for all you guys watching, we're showing you everything. There's no secrets now. It's my first one I've ever done. <laughs> So I want to point out, these are already larger than stock four rotor tension bolts. These are half inch or 12 millimeter ones. And these aren't even the big boys. We are so close to removing the rear iron and then you guys get to see the part. Wow. No blow by. Yeah. Everything was sealed. sealed right there. What he's saying is the side of the, the rotor face is all clean where yep. the oil rings are, aren't getting like a There or here, yeah. this, if the side seals weren't clear and straight, you'll get blow by into here. Yeah, so exhaust everything. and shit will go into the side of the rotor. We're gonna go ahead and take all the shit from this rotor, put it into its own bucket. These are probably the one of the biggest secret parts of this motor. And we'll be experimenting with all different types of dowels and studs and bolts as we go on. But these are actually all 16 millimeter all the way straight through the block. 
and that requires extensive amount of machine work and guess why I got a CNC machine. So these are the parts I need for my Corvette motor just to make it as solid as possible. Look at that tolerance, it's just tight. You can see it's a shoulder stud so that way it fits into the rear irons more properly. The front iron's all machined for it. So for my birthday, Dave said he's going to make me a hundred of these. <laughs> it's supposed to be a surprise, but uh, <laughs> he got so excited he told me. Clean as hell. We'll go more in depth on each of the rotors once we have it all disassembled too. We all want to see the same thing. Oh, there's where rotor four was having that one bit of lower compression in two of the faces. That's Little chip. Two stepping Perfect. the fuck out of it. Corner seals commonly break when you two step or you have bad timing. And I've had both. <laughs> rotor two at least, yeah. yeah. Okay, so here comes the first housing. This is gonna get blocked out. You can't see this. <laughs> Top two. Stock ports. Stock ports. <laughs> this is what I've been dying to see. I'm pretty impressed with uh, That was my big thing. It's like I was wondering how these were gonna fare. This took a beating because of the aluminum that went in. That little edge right there, you know, rub some of that shit off. Yeah. It still ain't that bad. Yeah. Which side was the corner seal on? That, this side or that? That side. Okay, so it Back should've, side, so. we lucked out that it didn't chew in the... Yeah, it didn't, it, I don't think it come apart, it stayed in there. Uh, we'll have to take this low yeah. off. So we have a bit of a problem. This is just like my sex life. <laughs> I have this piece that goes to this slide hammer. This goes to this. I say, I say we weld it. So as many of you already know, this is a multiple piece E-shaft. This is very common for four rotors that the rear one pops off. Four piece eccentric shaft to be exact. That's right. I did a damn good job. That, that right there is the reason I took the motor apart after you and I did it. You do not want a single fingerprint drop of oil, breath, anything, sperm. You don't want anything <laughs> on that taper because there was tons of shit on there. <laughs> we, so. I literally went out of the way to oil them. I like put grease, the red grease, and I'm like, I'm gonna make sure this E-shaft stays lubricated. So as soon as we got the motor back together, the guy from New Zealand that built the E-shaft was like, do not breathe on in, Yeah. Ruined our whole world. Yeah. He did not expect us to have this thing rebuilt in th like three days like we literally <laughs> said we were going to. Nobody believed it. When I chose to partner with Valvoline, the relationship is just obviously organic. I don't have to sell anything to you guys because the product itself is doing all of the talking. Literally, right here, you can actually see there's what I call the alien blood, which is what I affectionately call the Valvoline's VR1 2050 full synthetic. The reason I show you that is because this surface, everything, is riding on this bearing right here. And I can't show you more clearly than this one right here goes inside of the rotor. So you see 300 horsepower, roughly, is being pushed against this. You're, you're, there's, no, there's no direct contact. This is riding on oil, pushing and forcing this, which is what creates power. This, once this thing spins, you know, as much as we joke about rotaries not having torque, there was over 200 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, not even at the crank, being made through these. So this is pushing and turning quite hard. It, all the way up through the high RPMs. This is being suspended by oil. This is being suspended by oil. One of the reasons I chose VR1 years ago was not the synthetic version, but they also have a conventional oil one that is available just about anywhere you go. But the synthetic version is capable of making even more power. You do get more for going to the full synthetic. Both products have the same ZDDP formula. So they both have about 1,400, 1,300, 1,400 parts per million of zinc and phosphorus, which is notoriously needed for rotary engines at these sort of power levels, that softer metal really comes in handy. To protect this engine, you normally need two things. One is obviously the fluid itself, but also pressure. And we have been struggling with getting oil pressure in this engine and not only getting it, maintaining it. This is the product I use in this engine and you can actually see it says for push rods and flat tappets. Uh, I have neither of those. <laughs> rotary engines don't have rods, but it clearly works for more than just that. One of the most important things about this is this is a synthetic product. And I know there's a handful of rotary guys that are still stuck in the old school mentality that synthetics aren't good for rotaries. 
the fact is they're wonderful for rotaries, they're not good for the oil metering pump. Mazda compromised on the stock engine design by adding crankcase oil into the combustion chamber. I don't care if it's synthetic or non-synthetic, you shouldn't be doing that if you're looking to make tons of power and be reliable. So a lot of rotary guys now premix. That said, if you're still worried about synthetics for some reason, this is the product I've used for many years and made all the power on the three rotor with. And so it's the same product, just a traditional oil. The other wonderful thing about this is you can definitely find this at all the auto zones, O'Reilly's and so on. So if you need this in a pinch, you can find it on the shelf. Do you want anything from the gas station? Takis, who said that? The rotor three. Well, this one's the super double top secret one here. Oh, there's Omar. See that bearing that nobody has? <laughs> That's not it, it's in the yeah. other one. Yeah, he's trying to sandbag. This is just beautiful. We scraped all the aluminum off, but I'm sure with the aluminum that uh, situation, it definitely took the housings down a little bit. Of course, this actually has perfect compression. This is all like 110s all across the board, but you can see it looks worse than that, but it's it's not. Here comes round two. It's got no blow by whatsoever. It's perfect. As you guys may know, the oil actually sits inside of the rotor, so you have to take that into account when balancing because oil sits inside of there as part of the design. Some of the aluminum somehow is in the water. The water is nice, I like it. Well, this face isn't even worn. Not a bit. Look at, look at the, the, what we did was, if anything, the, it, was still, it still has those marks. Yeah. So inside of there is that special bearing that I was talking about that you can't see. Yeah. But now we have to do the 180 and go yep. to the front. <laughs> So rotor one and three are nothing to speak of really. Basically what it's supposed to look like when you spend the time to make sure everything fits right. This isn't for me, this is for you. Everybody on the comments saying that the engine was never gonna run because you didn't measure those yeah. uh, side seals properly. Not only did the engine run perfectly, but his measurement of side seals by hand caused zero blow by and zero binding, like all that bullshit that people are giving you shit about. <laughs> it just shows everything. Technical as everybody thinks they need to be. Make sure when I do this one, I put everything in upside down. I think this is the first motor of mine that I've ever had to tear apart where it didn't have dents in every rotor. Look at that. Perfect. The next time you do it by measurement, it's gonna not work at all. Gonna blow by. Yeah. If, if it just came down to replacing housings for the hell of it, I'm. Hey, hey we're good. More power. Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. I think just the oil made it look worse than what it was. Yeah. So here's one of the most important, special, secret things about this block. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. So this is the moment for you guys. We blurred this out in the past, is that this rotor right here is a removable lobe. That's actually normal on all four rotors. It's inside of here is all the fanciness. Now this rotor actually connects to this rotor, which then connects to the E-shaft. This is a four-piece E-shaft. There we go. I had to, I had to do my special well, move. <laughs> you got you enough practice. So. <laughs> Another thing is that if anything was shifting, we'd see some sort of sign in these if those were actually doing this under high power. There's nothing there. Those tapers are perfect. The secret sauce. Yep. Oh, I should do one of my famous uh, endings to the video right now. Yep. That one was the only one broke so far, so that's good. Yeah, and thankfully that fine. That's not secret sauce either, we'd like to yeah, that, that. <laughs> We still haven't gotten to the secret sauce and there's like nothing left. <laughs> Shit falling out everywhere. In the other directions. So that rotor looks good. Oh, this house thing still has all the aluminum in it. Yep, you can see it all right here too. Yeah. That's probably why it was that. Uh... Yeah. Shit. Whoops. So this is our worst rotor out of all the rotors on the engine. I mean, it was still running and making full power, but it never recovered from the aluminum. That was my theory, because we had low compression. And it, when I say low, I'm not saying low, low. But we had, from the very beginning, we've always had, you know, just keep an eye on it compression levels with this. And the aluminum just embedded into this chrome. Please and we turned the boost up on this rotor <laughs> yeah. to make up for it. We can take this off, though. Yeah. It's a housing. That, yeah, the housing. It's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel it through my glove. That's why that's why I believe that I would get compression and it would kind of it would go it would kinda of come in and out. Here where basically is a shiny. So it's probably escaping through there and even possibly here. She did a good job. Again, I mean 
We still made a shit ton of power. Yeah, Isaiah boned the motor right away, and then we still killed it in a good way. Here is the secret the sauce. Actual, yeah. True secret sauce. That's Just fun. this. This is it. This is the core of this motor that results are proving, but we believe that makes this superior to most four-rotor, if not all, four-rotor engines. Uh, this lobe is not connected like a, like a miniature two-rotor right here. Normally, mm -hmm. these two lobes are connected, like, like raw material. That lobe is removable. Yeah. That was it. What you guys are about to see is the thing I blurred out in the previous video, and I'm not one normally to blur anything out, but this. But if you actually watch the video carefully, you'd I, actually I see that I left it in there. there. That right there is the race for a center bearing. So the very center of the engine is also ball bearing supported, and I think with all the oil pump failures we've had, this thing has earned its, earned its fair share of credit. The journal bearings are perfect for all the other things but this is just one more level of holding the damn engine together. I think it's doing its job. Well, there you have it. Absolutely no secrets whatsoever. This is simple. Everything here is basic. And somehow this guy, these guys, all of that is what made a rotary haul ass against Ken Block. This that's all there is to it. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up in the next video. There's nothing broken other than that one little corner seal from probably two-stepping or bad timing. And uh, put her back together and then go for even more power.